uh, on Sunday. Sunday is the day of our playoffs, the Team three days before that are all bad. group stage days, and the Saturday is the day of death. One, <laughs> no, sorry, four teams will be eliminated <laughs> on just one day. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very scary here with Capitalist and Winter. These teams want to avoid scary day, and uh, Liquid is uh, is on track Ten to avoid scary day. Yeah. Very much so. They are they're they're one up, and do you feel like they're just gonna Five cruise on through remain. Sunday? Yes. Yes. Radiant. That, 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 that. I'm sorry, <laughs> Brazil, but yes, I, I do think Liquid's just gonna make this uh, a pretty. 2-0 stomp. I mean, what are you, you said that experience back. is pretty important in being able to kind of right the, the wrongs yeah. that happen. Figure what, out what is wrong, which is the key hero to maybe adjust your bands to. And yeah, I, it, it takes a lot of time to be able to do that correctly. And yeah. I think that drafting is particularly hard Radiant against uh, team a team like back. Liquid, um, who've kind of always have done this, but they, they have like these problem heroes. So you know, these heroes that you don't want to give away in the opening Liquid banned like Mirana instead of Earthshaker. Like the last game they banned Jakiro and Earthshaker. So interesting. Be interesting. Ten yeah. seconds remaining. Wanted to see the Theo Liquor Earthshaker. Didn't Five flex. Seconds or maybe remaining. they want to pick the Earthshaker now. I don't know. Uh, they could obviously yeah, pick the Earthshaker themselves. We know GH is a yeah, first pick god of that time. one too. And then if, Team I mean, SG at that, at that point, they have to pick Night Okay. <laughs> you have to pick Night Stalker if you're SG. Like, there's no way around it. No pressure. Yeah, but they might not play the, like, play the hero, so... Hard to say what they want. And Vino is open this time. They ban out Vino the last game. Ten seconds remaining. Are you gonna give Liquid Vino? Like... <laughs> no. Five seconds remaining. There's too many things, so... Like, when, when a situation like this arises, usually the team should probably focus on the, themselves. Like, pick what Radiant you're comfortable with, what you're good at. Venom there we go, they pick up the Venom of themselves. Venom. And oh, the combo. Okay. This is good, this is a good start. Good start, good combo. By but the way... This two is very weak against uh, like, uh, like some brute mother pick, I don't know. <laughs> this uh, SG team has got a 100% win rate with Lich. We didn't see Lich. Previous game, right? They, it wasn't that. What happened to Lich, Winter? Lich... She was the same, he was the same. Radiant team I don't think it changed back. much. I think teams just got better at playing against Lich. They knew what heroes to pick mm -hmm. against yeah. Lich. But still, like, Lich in the right game <laughs> just wins you the game, you know? Yeah, I think when, when we first started seeing Lich, people to ban. were not... Like, they were still picking the same kind of right clickers that they normally do, even though Frost Armor makes such a huge difference. It's not also, just the armor increase, the It's also the, the game slow. plan, though, I think, like... People don't really understood how Lich was strong back then. And how Lich, because so much priority has been Radiant put on the mid lane, back. and Lich just like, he goes to mid lane and GG, you, you call GG in the mid lane. Yeah. Like, there's like two men here, and then suddenly the position vault comes in, there's three heroes mid, and your mid yells, help, get me out of this <laughs> Why game. am I getting tri lined in mid? <laughs> yeah. But it seems like Liquid has a very distinct idea from TI Ten what they are drafting remaining. in this event. They have this like huh? lineup around Chen, Earthshaker, Chen, Earth Spirit, Five Chen Io. Yes. Like Chen Turn seems to, to be the, the main piece of the puzzle in this event for them. They've been picking this hero Radiant what, team all the games, pick. right? Every game? Yeah, I think they yep. they've I think they learned from like secret and just watching them being so dominant in the European region. But at what point are we going to see people Team ban out Chen? Because um, well, earlier, I believe in the first series, uh, it was mentioned that uh, they weren't that ex that impressed with the Chen play. It wasn't as dominant as they were expecting it to be. Mm -hmm. And this game is going to be put to the test because they picked uh, enemy picked Bounty. Oh, Bounty yeah. is pretty good against Chen early. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, yeah, I like the fact that they're adjusting a little. Yeah, like I I was really Five struggling to look at this and see a four position that would be good versus both Urshaker and Chen. It's not like Bounty Hunter is like great versus Urshaker, okay, anyway, yeah. but he's, he's at least a vision hero, right? Yeah. So you can get some tabs on what but, that initiator is. But the is thing doing. is, like, you can say the same for Chen against Bounty. When you group up, Bounty doesn't get killed. Like, Bounty yeah, wants yeah. to play the pickoff game. But I guess this game, he has uh, Venom and A. Those two are your team fight heroes, so they make up for the Bounty's weakness. Radiant I think they still have to find a way to force Liquid apart, though. Oh, so that's going to be the Earth Spirit, so it's going to be an off lane shaker. Earth Spirit is mm -hmm. really good against Bounty early, 
<laughs> With a dust, you can easily kill him. And ancient apparitions. Yeah, I think they're gonna. <laughs> free kill. They're gonna have early game problems this time. Yeah, Five they've got the same, same early game problems like last game. All these, all three of these heroes are very susceptible to hard initiation, right? It's like Venomancer, he really needs to be able to get his ultimate off. I mean, these other, I'm, these two supports. I'm just actually fall quite over. worried that if Liquid picks like a brute, you know, their heroes don't do it brute early. Are they not like the, the last two picks? Don't you feel like that they could solve the problems that they have with picks remaining? They could put Venom mid and still go for some tanky initiator on off lane. I mean, it's hard when you when you have. The majority of your draft picked up, and you have multiple weaknesses, yes. right? In that you have you have no stuns, you have no initiator. Like there's only so much that your final two cores can do to make up for that. Sure. There's like too many gaps this early on in the draft. Is it a plan to make the strong points that they do have stronger? Is that is that a play? Like which strong Team points? Yeah, that you see from the one that we already mentioned okay. that. Bounty Hunter is decent against Chen. They're annoying. <laughs> Their draft is really annoying. So they go for this time, it means Maybe more annoying. <laughs> they're going in for like full team fight, all team fight. Um, they're going to try to Ten clash as much as possible remaining. when Liquid... Because eventually the Chen is going to try to push your towers. Like I said earlier, like Five when you're up against remaining. like a pushing lineup, you try to either spit push or you draft like team fight and you defend. The push. So that's what uh, they have in mind right now with the Tide, AA, and Venor. But they don't have much catch with this kind of hero. So if Liquid decides to go for like some mobile speed pusher hero, it could be like very, very good against uh, the SG lineup. Do you think there's any, any chance that Liquid challenges them in this team fight? It's possible. They have Earthshaker and Earth Spirit. Yeah, if <laughs> they, they get like uh, Necrophos or something. Because one of the things I like about but it's Tide. Against AA though. Necro yeah, is AA. I don't like it so much. Yeah. Radiant team What's another Warrior. Uh, Ursa's not exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, I kind of like. like the, the, the thing with Ursa against Tide is like you're really good against the Tide in the lane. And the other thing is good about Ursa against the Tide matchup is like Tide is long cooldown. Ursa is no cooldown. Not, not much cooldown. So even if you lose a team fight. You still can fight later and maybe abuse uh, the Roshan. So you go into remaining. the big team, one key team fight with the Aegis, you win that fight, you get a big advantage out of it. Yeah, unless, unless you have like Force or something, it's like really hard to get, uh, to be the frontliner and get good Ravages tied this game. Because Urs is so good at yeah, being able to and, force And you. I don't think he'll be rich early because the no. lane will be bad for him. No, he will not be rich. <laughs> You're painting uh, us a very sad picture. It is. It is quite sad. <laughs> what was their ideal scenario? How the lanes would pan out? No, the thing is, like, they picked this bad. bounty. Like, it's a bit similar to the last game where they picked the CM against the Chen. They have, yeah. this, they have this idea of how to deal with the Chen. But then the pick becomes a problem. Uh, the pick causes other problems with their lineup. Like, the last game, the CM, he, the CM doesn't fight against the NS well early. And this game is like they picked this bounty against the Chen. But later on, Five the bounty won't be able remaining. to do a lot. I actually think that he can't help the tide. I don't think he can help the tide that much in the yeah. lane. He, tide is going to be poor. At best, maybe he can try and help help out the other lanes, the mid lane, maybe at least or at least scout out the Chen's rotation so the Chen doesn't kill any of his teammates. So what he can do in the game is pretty, I think I would say pretty limited. How important is the Chen's farm, or sorry, not Chen, uh, Tide's farm this game? Is it, if it's really important, is there a chance for them to put Tide safe lane and go Agro, Perhaps Charlie, aggro? Venno, ancient maybe, apparition, maybe. bounty. Yeah, I was maybe. thinking about the same thing. You still have the, the problem of like, it's but, always difficult to aggro tri lane against a Chen. Yeah. Um, but it, it's essentially just an aggro dual lane with bounty hunter staying on top of the Chen. And I guess and they would also rotate okay. the Ursa to be up against the Tide. Yeah, it's like a lot of teams when they draft nowadays, I mean, they see the initial lanes, they have a, like, this mindset. I want this hero against this hero. Yeah. So whenever they see this, they just switch whenever you see the, the matchup isn't right. So as long as they make sure that happens for them, the laning phase will be good for Liquid. Well, let's see. One last ban for Liquid. Which hero are they worried about? Which hero do they <laughs> not want to see? Depends on what they want in, for their last pick. They can just ban something that's really good with their last pick. Team is, Liquids uh, turn to mid ban out hero. So. Again? Ban out TA again. I guess TA is somewhat okay against Ursa. 
because you can have the trap and you scout the Urza doing Roshan. Mm -hmm. Not sure why they banned the TA. Maybe it's the, maybe it's because of the last pick. Ten seconds remaining. It's good against the maybe the lane is good. Five you have to have something that remaining. can also be able to deal with the uh, pressure that her spirit they put on. Radiant team pick. Luna. Like the Luna. Oh, okay, so it's a mid Ursa. Yeah, mid Ursa. So they can dodge the. So, okay, basically, I think the idea here right now is they want to have a kill lane. Because the Earth Spirit and Chen will be roaming around a lot. And if they roll on the enemy mid laner with the Ursa, it's quite easy for them Ten to get a kill if remaining. it's not like a corp part or something they can run away. But then you leave the Luna Five alone, so doesn't remaining. that make the tri lane more appealing for SG? Maybe, yeah, yeah it's possible. But then if I think if Liquid sees the tri lane, maybe they just uh, have the Earth Spirit and the Chen go top to secure the top lane. What a creep, a Chen with an extra creep with Earth Spirit and Luna with the aura, I think they can win the lane. And they can also push really fast. <laughs> so basically right now Liquid has like a push slash team fight slash Roche lineup, like group up, very heavy group up lineup. And very good early game as well. SG, SG has a uh, good team fight, but their early game is somewhat lacking. Their lanes, uh, I don't think their lanes are going to do so well. And can't, you can't even feel comfortable about like your late game or like having a good high game advantage. Choose your oh. hero. Lone Druid. Lone Druid or, or Sniper versus Luna is a bit of a classic, but... So they have this kind of, they are building, like, they, they just built like a push lineup with the Lone Druid, Venom, and the Tide. But I'm not sure if they can survive the laning phase without losing too much though. I mean, we'll see. If they, I think if they get up their items and their levels, they definitely have a very good potential of grouping up and just maybe playing. If the Lone Druid goes Radiance, they can group up as five with the Radiance, Vino LT, A LT with the Tide Ravage. I think they have a pretty solid team fight going on for them. Lone Druid could do pretty well in this mid lane setup, right? If they yeah, the and it's quite levels. hard for them to gank the Lone Druid, I think. It's yeah. not that easy. So I think I, I can see the idea that they have here. Yeah? Do you like it? Ten seconds. Not really. <laughs> I, think I was about to say, Winner, if you give your energy to SG Esports, I will follow you this time. <laughs> they need it. Because they need it real badly. <laughs> yeah. They need every bit of energy. This game is hard. I think harder than the last game all right. to execute early. If they win, I'll be incredibly impressed because I think execution-wise, this, this draft is like such on a razor-thin margin. Okay. Well, you heard it. The odds are against them here. SG, they're looking for that one more win to force out that third game. But let's see if Liquid can 2-0 their second opponent of the day. It is over to Odie Pixel and Fogged. Thank you very much, Sheev. And indeed, game two, SG versus Liquid. We've just seen the two lineups, the panel. They didn't really have their hopes up for what SG is bringing to the board this game. Are you kind of on the same same sort of thought path as them? that we talked about, obviously, what we heard from the panel, a tough game for Bounty Hunter. Yeah, I think that they have too much too much farm that they need. Lone Druid, Tidehunter, both these heroes need, need a lot of farm. Prepare I think this Chen, battle. again, I think that they can put so much pressure. I think the thing, the fact that Liquid also had this pick where they can grab like the Earth Spirit after the Bounty Hunter really hurts, because yeah. they want the Bounty Hunter to run around and hunt the Chen, but the beauty about Earth Spirit versus Bounty is, okay, he actually spots him, I think he, they actually see each other right away, but JH doesn't know that. They do ping it out though, so they are aware that there was something going on there. But yeah, you just roll in, you pop a dust, Chen has a creep, that bounty's dead majority of the time, unless it's some very bad creep, or the bounty has some great play for mis uh, outplay. And here we go, right away, a D ward comes out. And, oh, oh, they know he's there, they're pinging him out. They're moving in. Oh, they, they know he's there, but they don't see him yet. Do They've they, got another sentry. They do, is... Are they gonna drop it? They're all camping out. He can't leave the area. He cannot. He's a... He has to Shadow Walk again. They're going to see it this time. Oh. oh, no, no, no. No, Miracle actually moved. Just don't breathe, Theo. Hold your breath on. Can't. He can't move. So they're going to be moving a lot on this, uh, on the two supports on Liquid. That's why they're putting the Ursa, of course, versus the Tidehunter. Extremely favorable matchup versus the, for the Ursa. And I think we're going to see the adjustments come out. I think SG might actually make moves to change up the lanes so they can get those favorable matchups. Oh, don't matchups. do it, Theo. Begins. Is he walking out? Oh, he, he is seen by the sentry. He <laughs> gets the bounty. It is going to be Miracle, though. Yeah, Theo doesn't manage to get the steal. We'll get a few punches into Miracle, though, before going to mid lane. And indeed, it is going to be Miracle taking the Luna to the mid lane uh, by the looks of it. So, what sort of map, what's the reasoning for this mid Luna? I don't think I've ever seen this. 
Well, they have night vision. Uh, they have at least like that mini stun to be able to catch as well, and lots of damage to make up for the Earth Spirit. I think that's what kind of what they're going for. They have if they get the roll off and they get a couple right clicks, it's actually so boosted that they could kill the Veno. However. It's not a Veno. They do do the switch up for SG. Okay. They are putting the Tide mid, and they are getting that Veno versus Ursa. That ah. very favorable lane's coming out for SG right now. The only lane that can be nice for uh, Liquid right now is bottom. That being said, though, they have an Earth Spirit and a Chen. These guys just move around and wreak havoc on the lanes oh, afterwards. Like it. yeah, so yeah. it's kind of a tri-solo coming out from Liquid. You raise your mid Luna, we raise our mid Tide. See how that matchup does end up. Bottom lane as well, I guess. This should also be quite a nice lane for SG. Well, having the Lone Druid solo against the Shaker, seeing this melee here, is it, is it possible to sort of bleed the Shaker out the lane? I, I guess the problem being it is a mind control Shaker, and if anyone's going to have a strong lane even against the, the tougher odds, it is going to be mind control. But what, what, how do you expect this bottom lane to go? I mean, Lone Druid wins, but my, yeah, I heard Shaker farms yeah. just fine. Top lane, roll comes in. They get the clap as well on the Venomancer. Can they close the gap? Unable to fully finish it off. And now GH. Getting turned on a little bit, but the chilling touch had already been expended, and Venno unable to turn to get those trades. Roll it again. They've got the dust. The other core coming a bit too close, and that is a dual lane killing it. A, a dual lane killing it. A tri lane. Not what they wanted to be happening up on that top lane SG at all. No. And now Kuro is starting to get better creeps. Had the wild King level one. Gets the troll level two. Now can actually make moves, and this is where they can punish the. The Lone Druid, if they're able to get the wrap around behind it, Lone Druid can get killed pretty easily by those gen rotations if there's an Earth Spirit as well. I mean, look, look at this aggression from mid lane. I mean, the poster uh, continuously sort of farming just right up by the tier one. Not feeling the threat of the rotations of Liquid at all as of yet. And he's getting good CS at the moment. Pretty much on par with Miracle. 12 for 3 on the tie, 11 for 1 on that Luna. Yes, be careful how much he wants to do that now. It's level 3. If the the nice thing about Luna is too, it's a six second cooldown on Lucent Beam. So if the Tide Earner is too far up, you can usually get two Lucent Beams for the chase. But Boy. he's in a decent position. The scan comes out. Yeah, they they know that the bounty's there. Right on top of him, yep. They didn't have the detection or want to, to go for it though. Kuro's Kuro going to have his second creep now with a Hadouken creep. So he's, he's walking around. And uh, this bounty not doing uh, at all maybe what we expected. You know, you mentioned the potential of doing the bully the Chen, soak some of the XP, but the other core is still sitting, I believe, level one on this bounty. It's the same thing we see every game from Liquid. Sack Matu, focus on the other two lanes. GH finds a haste rune, and with the Seder creep bottom, they're closing the gap. He yeah. does not have a TP. He looks gonna, he's very dead. Yeah, they're just gonna chase this one down. He will bring the bear back in. Looking to try and control it, but with the bottom smash of the roll, can they save this man? They cannot. Kuro's there to watch GH destroy the lone druid. It's like the same thing that, I feel like it's such a simple, like the same formula that Liquid does almost all the games. My control doesn't have a super favorable matchup in that offlane, and then they get him like one or two kills, or they get him an assist like that, and it becomes a completely different story. The next rotation comes down, the, the enemy hero tries to TP down, and dies again right away, and that's where the huge detriment starts to become very obvious. Kuro nice. staying toward bottom, and yeah, Miracle. They are starting to put some pressure onto him. Theo is there now. Kubosa. Can they actually do this? They have got the chilling touch, but it's not going to be enough. GH quick with the rotation, and SG just have to back off. And a bad body, you know, could be in trouble. GH rolling forward. Oh, gets a DD. All right, he'll and take he's that. There. They don't have Gush. They don't have heroes to stun or chase. That's what the panel was mentioning. It's only the Venomancer to really catch heroes. And again, Costa. Forced to use the Savage Roar, but he's getting chased. They have a Soul Ring Fissure, but he solves up. He should be fine in this escape. CS is starting to slow down though on that bottom lane 16. We are going to see up top Liquid. They find Adriano in the tree line, chase him down, but Timberman and TH. The third kill here for Liquid. Much better Earth Spirit this game for. Uh... Mr. GH and oh god, Costa gets Fissure blocked. The creeps are taking him out and the enchant totem. Oh boy. This is starting to get a sort of out of it was pretty much the similar time really. It was just before that five minute mark in game one where Liquid sort of started to pick up the pace with the three kills. Up top, they find the Gale. But GH simply rolls away. There's no stuns. There is literally zero stuns on SG's lineup to stop that. Completely reliant on getting that tide under the early level six, which they will, because he's mid. 
Radiance bottom tower is under attack. They've got to do something big with that ravage. Oh, to this sort of a star here for the side. Yeah, they're gonna take bottom tower. Lone Druid's gonna have a very attack. awkward position to go now because you know this is we talked about this a bunch of times where you lose your safe lane tower as these type of heroes like the Lone Druid, like the Sven, something like that. You don't have a place to go. And mid lane now, Machu with the level he four gank, but unable to clean up. They've got the Gush skill now, level 5. Matu could be in some trouble I here mean, with the chase. I mean, that would be a massive kill if they can pull it off. No, nope. But I don't think they can with that poor man's shield. He doesn't really care too much about a level 2 bounty. And the bottom tower dies. But they don't get the kill. They keep the tide alive. That rotation, though. You can tell Matu's not having fun top, per usual. He's ready to end the game. He's always six getting... Six minutes in. <laughs> he's, always getting the, he's always getting sacked for this team. And, Miracle now, going for the top, the Eclipse being expended and not catching on the post at all, hitting the creeps. Tumbi just wants to run at people. He's, very, he's rather low on health. I mean, he's at level four. Carry Ursa so just sitting in the mid lane with the rest of his team now. Liquid are trying to step things up, trying to bully SG. They'll nuke down the post. Uh, Matuma Man should be in trouble here. The Gale connects. He's going to tick down low, but they, he's able to deny. Miracle gets the deny off, making sure that SG don't see any kill here in this mid lane for now. Picks up the double kill. GH rolls out. Oh, God. They have no like, they have no response heroes because they have no disable. They can't catch anybody. The Veno is their strongest hero. He can throw out a Gale or two, but then afterwards, it's pretty tough for them to chase anything down, but now Kuro does oh. get killed, but my control's here. He's got Echo. And he just drops it straight up, down. And now the Posa comes in, too. A couple of the Furious Flights stacked up, and he will be able to walk off. The tower is down, though, and Matuma Man is chasing. Look, Kuro trying to... He's going to with that. That Cardi the Creep. Ravage comes through. It's, it's all five. Eight. Five man Ravage. And Itai's still dead. Yeah, he's still dead. Oh. They but get they, Kuro. Oh, they get a kill. That's one. They get a kill. It was, it was down. Eight to one. That's a high value kill as well. That man's a TI winner. Yeah, but that's worth ten kills. They're just completely steamrolling and running at them. Like the Shaker already has six. Eight hundred gold to Blink Dagger. GH is on point this game with the with the Earth Spirit. Two zero and five. They're not allowing this bounty hunter to do what the game plan is. You know the game plan is follow the Chen. Don't let the Chen get all the creeps. But Bounty is unable to do so. He's hoping for a Courier Snipe. You can do it, Theo Lacour, if you believe. I didn't believe hard enough that the Courier's come down south. Grim. Don't even know if we can get it at this stage. The damage anyway. Up top, cost to build looking some space. Zing in onto level 7. They really just, they lack damage and they lack heroes to really do anything. Now Ravage is on cooldown, they don't have that group up mechanic. Who do they gank for? Can't gank for the Lone Druid. Can't gank for the Tide. You pretty much have to use your Venomancer to make those moves for you, but this is a core Venomancer, it's not some kind of support. So my man does have the ult. He should be just fine here. He's trying to dive, he's a bear on bear action there, and oh, GH comes through with the boulder smash. He wants the They want to bear. bring down Alfredo. And Alfredo has got 300 gold in the bank for GH. Doesn't get an earn charge though. For the he doesn't. <laughs> but and he lost. They're putting, you know, the, at least GH or SG is trying to put some pressure somewhere. And, oh, Kuro oh. might actually be dead here. Oh, okay. Kuro, I mean, Kuro straight up feeding now. That's he just stood there. Yeah, come on, Kuro. Step it up. He knew that was uh, the wrong path to take. Uh, let's play spot the man that's not 9k. <laughs> Poor old Kuro. Poor Kuro. Poor Kuro. Somebody has to die though in these type of games. <laughs> they do. You know, he's taking him on for the team, Kuro. He's the captain. Yeah. He's chilling. There's, it's, there's always going to be that one person. When you have a game that's going this well, you have three, your, well, two of your three cores, like fully free farming, somebody's going to die. Somebody's bound to make a wrong turn. And it's it's good that they did that without the Venomancer. So they're able to get some levels spread out onto the AA, onto the bounty. Much needed. Got the blink on Shaker. Nine and a half minutes in, my oh, control. It. Oh, God. Dyer's middle Oh boy, that's, eight already. That's, uh, that's an FPL winner there. He already starts the pings. He's like, I want to smoke. I want to make a play happen. Oh, Miracle. They don't have AA6. They've got Ravage. Don't underestimate the level 4 AA. Bardo did, and he didn't believe in his ability to solo kill a level 9 Luna. Disappointing. It's DD bottom. Take it for the lads, just wait by it. Twice the Top of the man, getting sent back by a savage roll. Yeah, he's just trading, he's trying to kill the bear. Kuro saw the bounty for a moment with that sentry. 
Gonna see him again. He's probably expecting a ward to be placed in this area soon. Kuro is on the hunt there for that man. Top, Earthshaker, and Earth Spirit find Costa with the Echo Slam with the follow up. They stalked him for quite a while and were able to find that opportunity. Okay, gold lead now up for the. Team Liquid. I'm trying to think like how SG really wants to get back in it. They want to fight around the tide, but they don't have the heroes to really do so for that. And the closer now, he's gonna fish it. He's fissure blocked. They're brought in the bear. They've got the control. Summer Man starts to rip into him. He has a ravage if he wants to pop it, but it's not gonna achieve anything if he does. GH on a killing spree. Kill secured with the boulder smash there. Absolutely. GH making sure. And he has the KDA. And look at this, they're just all split up around the map. Like Liquid just has the Luna bottom. Now they have like the three or four gathering mid to kind of push, but Miracle doesn't seem to care. He's just like, okay, I'm free farming. I'm a free farm Luna. They can't put pressure on me unless the Veno comes down. And here we go. They do actually see him. They have the Veno. They have the AA moving. Oh, and he's in. He wants to kill that bear. He's at it. This game is only big enough for one bear in town. Miracle bottom, instant TP out, but the Shuriken toss. Miracle gonna get cleaned up. He does go down. Very important kill for them to get. And we're actually seeing them turn around up top. They're gonna get Kuro. He nice. gets left behind. All right, SG getting a couple. Very Bill's gonna keep himself alive. But Tuma Man is now turning up to the fight. Team of the Lake. Where up where you? GH coming back in. They will finally kill off the bear. There's another 300 in the bank. Ravage comes through for the poster. Sets up for the gale onto Mind Control. But here comes with Tuma Man. Boulder smash back onto two. The fish is there to hold down the tide. They're gonna deny my control. They're oh. trying. Oh, oh, they cancel the tax. Timber, kill your friend. Oh, oh, oh the Chenio now. Jip eight. Oh, he's still dead though. And now he's dead anyway. Right. And now they're gonna lose, they might lose Matu as well. Okay, with the port. Yeah, this is SG. Oh. Matuma man gets kicked. Theo. Might be able to finish up Matu. He does. All right, boys. Big swings All coming right. around here. Really is. Radiant SG are not gonna be disappointed with that. A very split up type of situation happening. You know, Look Liquid that. has three heroes kind of positioned there. Earth Spirit comes a bit uh, a bit later on, but Miracle all alone bottom gets picked up by three heroes, gives a lot of a lot of bounty and a lot of experience to the heroes that really need it, the AA and the Bounty Hunter. Both hitting six now, Track is online, as well as Ice Blast. Now they can actually try to take fights and while, when Ravage comes back up in 90 seconds. But they have to play around their strengths. Lone Druid, still gonna take a long time to get online. It's really to play around the Venno and, uh oh, speaking Lone of Lone Druid. They've surrounded him down bottom, Liquid with an invasion into the jungle, mind control. Oh, slams him down. That's another one, 12 for 6 at the moment, Liquid 3k gold lead. And continuing to play incredibly aggressive against SG. Very deep aggressive wards too coming up from Kuro. Starting to take advantage of whenever that Tidehunter ravages down. My Miracle now is gonna join the team. Maybe go for some more tower pressure. But the mirrored movement by Adriano, top lane. This is a good move by SG. They need to be able to force the aggression elsewhere instead of taking fights in their jungle. They want to be able to react to get a big fight, but they need everything. They need poison over, they need ice blast, they need ravage to really oh, get a successful lane. fight. Cost the bill. He doesn't even have his bear up oh. yet. He has no bear. Dyer's but he will survive. He's under attack. He's fast on his feet. Will get himself back by himself. Town a time to to breed a new bear. Game. Radiant comes scared. out from SG. They're checking around the pit. It's just looking. It's looking similar though to the last game in, in comparison with GH. You know, he's three zero on seven oh. again. Down Top five net worth. Yeah, Ice Blast just slowed down the rush a bit. Hello. Don't underestimate track goal. We've got that online now. Yeah, they've got Ravage. Tidehunter went for a Dominator as well. Oh, I love it. They won't expect that. Nobody expects the Helm of the Dominator Tide. And they go with the Gale onto Mind Control. Turns with the Fisher. Got that Ravage if they can find the chance to bring him down. But look at these Golems go to work. Adriano getting new down low. Stick charges do keep him up for now. Mind Control sent home. Kuro says it's past your bedtime. Do manage to stop Liquid for now doing Roche, but Liquid GH oh, two phased. Oh. Actually just gets brought down. Ice Blast. Alright. Pushes Bardino. him over. He went very deep for SGH, trying to get the like solo kill. Didn't have enough stones though to go for magnetize and spread. Only with that one remaining. Liquid now slowing yes. down a bit, wanting to catch up with one. They have managed to stop Liquid from 
going for Roche. Obviously, yeah. with uh, she's landed, they can't really take Roche themselves, though, so. Most they can do is just. So the Liquid do not get a free Roche, because that would cause a lot of issues. Uh, Liquid could get an Aegis at this stage of the game. It's going to be incredibly hard for SG to try and hold up in the fights. As it is, it's obviously already very difficult down to the lead that Liquid have, but there's still a chance for SG. Yeah, it's, it's still very early. It's only 4k lead. Luna does take some time. It's a hero that's a little bit slow. They did see the, seem to see the smoke. You see the Tidehunter start backing out as well. Going to sit on the high ground. He's going to break the smoke, but the Fissure comes out. Straight up, mind controls in. If he did chase down the front, they did pop the uh, the Luna roll for this one. It, they will get the kill, though. Laposa chased down. Now, can SC do anything in response? With the man down, it's unlikely, but Adrian is going to try his best. Leads him with the Gale, and the other mind control comes in. Straight away with the slam, Fisher onto two. They'll knock down Adriano, they'll knock down the early core, and SG losing three. Make that four almost certainly as Matumba's there with the chase down. This bear wants his snow cone and he'll get it. So much catch, so much disable, so much team fight from Liquid. SG just don't have the don't have the best heroes to kind of respond for that. It's really only the Tidehunter who can get in the front lines, and everyone else, we were saying, you know, it's a bit of a greedy draft. They take a lot of time. Tidehunter needs farm. Lone Druid needs farm. Venomaster's, Venomaster's pretty much the only one who's online on top of the supports. But, you know, they still have track. They can get back in as long as they get several track kills, but yeah. Liquid's really not letting up and not giving them the opportunity to stay in group together, no, making sure they the don't pit. split. SGR all, all back up, though, and they do have Ravage. Liquid, this time, though, I feel that they, they want to just take the fight outside of the pit, make sure that they have a... A strong chance to go for Roche after getting a pick off. I don't think SG can let them get Roche. You know, Winter brought up that mention on the panel where with SG's lineup, you want to get that one big team fight with your ultimates and you get that big wipe. Yeah. But if there's an Aegis, your big ultimates, your big team fight can go completely to waste in that regard. In lane, SG. I need to prove up and push it. I mean, the problem is as well for SG is where's your initiation with this lineup? Yep. I guess at the moment it's the Helm of the Dominator creep on Tide. That's one way to start things off. They're all starting to fall. Well, the majority of them are starting to fall pretty far behind. Luna, almost 10,000 net worth compared to the Tidehunter, who, let's say Luna was laning burst, more than double the Tide's net worth. Very Spirit is very touched upon. GH has been having excellent movements this game, almost a blink dagger finished. And poor old Lone Druid, going for the Maelstrom Mask of Madness build. Radiance today. Trying to keep the distance, you know, uh, I think Cap mentioned it on the panel, was like, the old school thing versus Luna was either Sniper or Lone Druid, you get that range and you can be able to damage it from a distance, but when you're half the net worth of the opposing Luna, you are definitely going to struggle quite a lot. Level 15 on Miracle as well. They're ready to smoke again, it looks like. Eight, Liquid. Eight, eight. Whenever they have Echo Slam, they've got all their full team fight. And I believe it's a blink dagger as well coming up from for GH and yeah, yeah it's got it done on the yeah. So they've got double blinks for setting up those fights yeah, while in comparison. SG do have a good position here. If Liquid are to come over to this half of the map, but as you can see at the moment, Liquid keeping the distance, they're heading down towards the bottom. So this smoke from SG not gonna kick off the fight that they were desperately looking for. They need to take the perfect fight. They they have to somehow Radiant start it upon Liquid, but attack. Liquid with these items, with these heroes. My it's so hard for SG to get that surprise jump that their lineup relies on to S get that combo. SG's trying to minimal minimize the damage, though, in my opinion, what they're doing here. You know, they're smoking around top, they're smoking around the Roche so that Liquid can't make their move in there. Sure, they're losing bottom, which is not good for them, not good for them, but they're not losing a Roche and just losing the game straight up. They're trying to make space, trying to force Liquid into Radiant's a different position. Back-to-back -back smokes coming out, Liquid now smoking up toward top. And it looks like majority of the heroes from SG porting the hell out of there. Fortification will be forced out. I mean, the other heroes on SG are still moving in aggressively. They do still have Adriana sticking around. He's looking for some farm, but it may be his last for a bit of time as the Boulder Smash initiation comes in from GH. Mind control with the Echo Slam. Fisher on top over them. That'll be one down. As they take Adriana, they're going to look for Costa Beal as well. He goes straight away for the TP. Is he going to get out? Oh, he is. Boulder Smash off the mark. They tried for a guess with it. Costa Beal able to hide in the trees and get out safely. He got the spirit bear though, you know. At least they got the gold bounty. That bear has seen a lot of abuse this game. Yeah. At least three times it's been taken down. That's a 900 gold. 
for the Zarya Liquid. Oh, they knew Bounty. They saw Bounty Shadow Walk. Stun was off the mark and Dust was still on cooldown. He just used it before that, trying to find that Bounty. Slightly off the mark, but now Ward just set up. They're moving into the pit, and this is uncontestable. How this Luna so is massive. Yeah. This Ursa as well has Blink Mask of Madness. It's pretty much yeah. impossible for them to come in turn indeed. Liquid get away with it for free. Jump for Mind Control as well, ready to kick things off again. Looks towards the AA, takes him down. Gale from Auntie Adriana, they're trying to turn, but Matuma jumps into the three of them, gets off the clap. Hannah God's there, Mind Control is slowly falling, but it looks like he should survive. He gets himself right with the Grizzly, he's still ticking down. Does get sent at home though, Kuro saving Mind Control. He's going to be fine with that Fountain regen, outdoing the DPS of the Venomancer. Honestly, this Chen is doing every single one of these games. It looks like somebody's about to die. He tanda gods them, sends them home. One of those following combinations, and this time it was both. Yeah. Saving my control. Keeping up that aggression. Kuroki Chen. Yeah, he's, you know. <laughs> he's been playing an incredible game. I well. mean, I think he's just going to play it every game if they let him. Might as well. Yep. Yeah, those fools on the internet. Oh, his ult's worse than Lycan. Kuro saying, I don't give a damn. I'm going to turn up. I'm gonna poon some noobs, old school style. Nah, they nerfed like, they nerfed like. <laughs> that was there the result. Go. Oh, Ice Blast, it's gonna be a nice one, GH. Pulling low as well. They do get the Earth Spirit, but they've lost the Tide. Liquid, still very happy with the way this game's going. 20 to 8, 22 minutes in, 12k gold lead. 12k on that Miracle Luna as well. Yeah, they're not letting up whatsoever. It's not only just a 12k gold, it's a 12k experience lead too, which is just another big test for me. I mean, Luna's level 18, and the next highest level is level 14 Venom Enter. That's with the 30% experience gain talent. They're just unable to really push their lanes out properly, and Liquid keeping the fights on the enemy side of the map constantly. So SG's unable to really get that catch-up mechanic going for them, unable to take fights on their own terms. It's just them getting ran at, and the Tide Hunter unable to get good positions to get the Ravage, falling further and further behind Fourth from the bottom on net worth. Luna almost tripled the net worth now of that tight owner. And they're, look at this, no hesitation. Liquid's not backing up, they're not healing up, no. no. There's no need to. They want to be able to keep sieging this, keep SG on the back foot. And now BKB finish coming out. Yeah, I don't, I actually do not know how they kill Luna unless they full combo with a perfect gravity from the fog or from the high ground. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. We'll send Matsuma back, bottom lane. That wave out was being pushed in by Costa Beal on the Lone Druid. They don't feel like they're in a rush no. at all. This Luna is farming infinitely more of the map than anybody else on the side of SG. And they're just going to now play Suffocation game and maximize as much as possible. Smoke comes out. It's under a ward by Kuro. Kuro just one fronts in. I mean, he's got the, the Golem army here. Ice Blast does connect onto Kuro. He will go down, but Miracle leads him with a BKB and the Eclipse. Takes down the Tide. GH looking for the Boulder Smash. Beautifully timed there onto both not just the Veno, but the Lone Druid as well. Costa Beal falls back. Miracle picks up the double as he takes down Adriano. They don't have the creep shed in this mid lane, but again, as you say, Liquid are in no rush. They can wait as much as they want here, as they just are just taking up. fight after fight. Yeah. Now, 500's dead, that's the only way that SG can really take fights is with the Ravage, but Liquid's giving them no space, no breathing room. Over there. Miracle. Matu could be dead here. Yeah, they Find the stun there with the helm of the Dominator Creepman with the Shuriken, he's down. That's a tasty bit of gold there. Theo Lacour straight up with 841 in the bank. A killing spree worth 841. That's when you feel, that's when you just oh, feel how yeah. truly far behind you are in this game. That track gold though. Track gold though. Miracle, approaching butterfly territory. 24 minutes in on. Yeah, this is the mid lunar, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to a pub near you soon. Thanks to our boy Miracle. At least SG now, they have a little bit of breathing. There's an 18k deficit, but at least now they're they're trying to make their moves outside of their base, trying to push out the lanes a little bit. But as soon as Kuroki finishes getting his army, as soon as Matamba finishes that BKB, it's go time again for them. And they'll slam up in 30 seconds as well. Should all come around the same time. Miracle just, yep. Yeah. Farming alone top, no fear whatsoever. Pushing top lane. Street. 
trying to group up down bottom. They're itemizing very well on Liquid 2 now. Kong for the pipe next on Kuroki. Top is under attack. To deal with that A and Venom Blast. Radiant are scared. The only way that they can put a stop to this Dyer's SG is looking top to be pretty, pretty close to being impossible. They saw the smoke coming out. They're all gonna back up now for the Dyer's time being. They need that tide in a good place at the moment. The tide is not on the front lines on the side. Jumping straight away with the Echo Slam. They take down Adriana before he gets a single spell out. The Ravage It's nice. The Ice Blast. Does come through onto Mike Chopper, he uses himself up a clip for Miracle, brings down a second double kill for this Luna. Kuro to take down Theo Lacroix again, SG losing three. But you know, hiding in the sidelines, but Mind Control, he's hunted him out, holds him in place for Matuma Man to jump in and finish off the job. SG Esports losing four. It's such a hard to execute draft versus, versus what Liquid's got going, and at such a deficit, it's even harder. 20k gold lead going for Liquid, 20k experience lead. Miracle putting the thanks, the crowd saying let's go Liquid. Miracle thanking yep. them. The one Liquid fam. Butterfly. The crowd, I think, uh, uh, exact sort of silence. It's, it's one of those games where you, Radiance middle there's not really much to say or cheer. It's just, it's a, it's a feels bad man of a game. Yeah, Luna approaching 750 GPM now. He's up at the base alone. Now they're getting every single item they need. Pipe finished up on Kuro. BKB finished up on Matu. It's it's looking to be impossible for SG to come back in this one. There's so many constantly these massive items coming up with Liquid. It's just not stopping. This is uh, you know Team Liquid showing us that these guys they they may have taken a bit of a break after TI, but. It has not hindered them at all. This is the playstyle is the same, and yeah. you notice even when they're at such a crushing amount of like net worth, you don't see four man mid, you don't see like five man mid. No, they're putting one top, one mid, another one push up bottom, and then they start to group up. When lanes are pushed, it's the most important thing to do in Dota. Even when you're ahead, you have to make sure to maximize the map and keep that pressure going out from all fronts. Miracle just taking out another shrine by himself. Radiant's bottom shrine has fallen. Rush should be the next pretty big one. The Rush is start spawning at 30. They've got no stun. The oh, catch is just so TPs minimal. were coming through there, but yeah. uh, GH. It's, it's, it's just straight out. Yeah. This farm as well. Mind control, Shadow Blade, Yule Scepter. Peace. Level 17. More than good to go. They've got the ults ready. They got everything online now. Liquid. I'm ready to take the fight. There's Do you see this? All the agonims. It's got to be one of the quickest acts in Pro Dota. Not even yeah, just on that. Spirit. It has to be on GH. They've got a super fast agonims, and also yeah. looking at Kuroki. He's got pipe and four mini creeps. So the magic resist aura. <laughs> he has so much magic resist for his team. It's only five percent from each one, but Kuro himself is sitting at sixty-one percent magic resist. Sixty-one percent. Centaur Courser, X3, uh, three Centaur Coursers, and a Hellbear for that 5% oh each. Oh my goodness, it all stacks up. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do the mass. 45% magic risk on each person. That's... Versus the heavy magic damage lineup that SG has. I mean, Kuro just bringing new strats to the game. <laughs> I just find it so funny that he got those creeps. He understands he doesn't need to do anything else in the fights. He just needs to heal his teammates, throw a pipe, yep. stand there. Keep him alive. The rest the rest of the damage will be done by his by his buddies. And they're looking to get that engaged with the act or spare. Oh. He finds somebody. Uh, oh. oh. He actually he just used the rock. The yeah, bounty he, to roll, he used the, the rock. To roll out. <laughs> he actually didn't get the boulder smash off in time first. I'm trying to be cheeky. Slight little mis slight little misclick there coming up from GH, but I mean I don't blame him, he's probably not used to many games where he's had an axe at 29 minutes in. So quite a peculiar situation for an Earth Spirit to find himself in. As this game, 20k gold lead, 30 minutes in. Roshan's going to be back up any second now. The Quick can look to just take that. Yep, Aegis and Cheese will be the easiest way to do that. Yep, it does respawn. The Courier is sitting on top of it too. Liquid not even wanting to expend any resources to scout it. They know it's there. 
they're gonna make their move. This is probably SG's last hurrah, trying to go. They have to go for some type of smoke movement and try to contest yeah. this. And I, I do not know how they can actually win a fight versus what Liquid's got. This five Luna. man, I mean five man, ice blast, ravage, poison nova. Luna pops BKB and kills everybody. And then they get track hold on everyone. <laughs> the Luna, I, this I mean, Luna is actually on, like unkillable in this. GH position on the high ground as well to break the smoke. And she's trying to go for some type of clever wrap around here, but oh, it is clever. I don't know how they can do this, Owen. I think Liquid showing here so I'll far this land will be offering teams the easier option of standing on a piece of Lego rather than playing the game against them. These games are nasty, <laughs> Liquid. Miracle just walks up, it means that tier, tier 3 is dead. I, you gotta get back, boys. Alright, he forced TP's back. Gale's off the mark, and the glaives, the damage. My control, in he goes on to Adriana, but Tumor Man pops the BKB, they'll throw out the Ice Blast, does connect onto Mind Control. Cliff's coming through as well, they do keep the other four alive at the moment. SG trying their best, but they've lost Costabile on the Lone Druid, neither with buyback available. The post of Thea Lacour and Bardino push back. They've lost the mid racks. There's the stone. They stone the tide, kick him back into the silence, bring down La Posa as well. That's and now me. they'll move down to bottom. Oh, well, before they do that, Winnie the Pooh wants his ice cream and he gets it. GG is called, and it is a very, very convincing 2 0 here for Liquid. They come out the top of their group, as to the surprise of very few, I believe, at home. This was. What was expected from Liquid, but maybe not in this fashion. Some people said, this is a team, you win TI, the TI curse is going to hit, you're going to have a break, you're going to go and play some, you know, weird Vahayo MMO or something. But no, these guys, they don't mess around. Nope. No no patience, no letdown whatsoever. Kuroki Chen, every single game, yeah. playing spectacular. GH having a much better performance on the Earth Spirit this time around, but it just seemed like SG's draft this time especially could not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with what Liquid had going. I mean, in SG, obviously, a lot of new faces for them. One of their first lands on sort of a, you know, an international level. They had a great showing earlier in their first series. This series, you, you can't really hold much against them. It, it, it's them against Liquid. A lot of teams in this position are going to be made to look pretty bad. It's TI winners. Like, what are you going to do? These guys know exactly what they want to do. They know how they want to play the games, and they execute to near perfection the majority of the time. Beautifully done by them this time. And a very nice draft and very interesting one coming out too. You know, going for the Luna, going for the Ursa, having yeah. a little bit of difference, just really wanting to punish that Tideherner, getting that group up lineup. Miracle farmed farmed his mind the up. Mid -Luna. Like, just farmed all over the place. He just was able yeah. to do whatever the hell he wanted this game. He was like, what? I think he ended at level, he's about to be level 25 at the end of the game there. I think Did he, he hit it? It was close. No, he was 24 and a half. 24 and a half. And he was about almost 800 GPM. It was like 770, 780 GPM. Yeah. I mean, that. Brutal. That, that sort of summarizes the, the game as well. I mean, do you think there was anything more that SG could have done? I mean, was there anything, you as an expert, would you have done differently? Say if you're drafting against Liquid, you look at this series and you say, if you are a team that is, you know, you are sort of, you, you, you know you're going to have a struggle against Liquid. They are the better side. What heroes do you prioritize? I think I mean, they just, they, they lost their heroes that they really like to play. They showed their hand in the first series that they played. Yeah. Their Earthshaker, their Jakiro, the big heroes that they're playing, the catch heroes, these team fighters. This time, they have no stuns. They yeah. have no real ways to catch heroes. They just have to really rely on mistakes and punishing the lanes, but they lose majority of the lanes. Yeah, I, I mean, we saw them react to lanes as well. You know, they made that alteration. We're sending the time in and such, but it just wasn't enough. At the yep. end of the day, Liquid taking the Series 2-0 and uh, the winners here of this group. But for now, we'll be able to pass over to the stage. As a